Blue Sky quickly became my Twitter replacement this week. And even better, the API is open for anybody that has an account. Major downside for anybody not on the app already, you do need an invite, and it doesn't look like that's going to change anytime soon. The TLDR for Blue Sky itself is it's basically Twitter, but not Twitter. Twitter from the early days, that is. Now, it's still a beta and missing major features like blocking other users, but it's a pretty functional beta that you can use today. This is a programming channel though, so let's talk about the tech and APIs behind Blue Sky. The Blue Sky API is based on a protocol called the AT protocol, which we'll get into later. Personally, what I care more about is the fact that there's an API at all, the fact that people can access that API and what people are building with that API. There's a Blue Sky API touchers Discord that you can join and that's where the client development is happening for a number of different languages, including mine, Rust. We're using Rust because I like Rust, but you can also use Curl because the API is just a set of HTTP URLs. The Blue Sky API URLs are something like Blue Sky Domain slash XRPC slash something dot something dot something. You can log in to an application to access the API using your username and password, or more recently, an app password, which is similar to what you would get if you were creating an app client with somebody else. I'd suggest using the app password. So if you've got a Blue Sky account, go into Blue Sky, go to settings, go to app passwords, create an app password, and then copy out the value. I'm using a .mvrc with durenv to store my secrets. So if I type out env.bluesky password, we'll see my password. Gotcha. I'm actually using a 1Password to store all my secrets. So all we see here is the ID of the place in 1Password that my secret resides. This is super helpful for making videos and streaming, honestly. If I open the .mvrc, you can see that my Blue Sky username, the service, so the root domain for the XRPC requests, and then the location of my, you know, 1Password password. In any case, the 1Password unmasking is why we have op run dash dash no masking, otherwise cargo run dash L JBWT test dot JSON with the user or the query that we're making is enough to run the application. The example app here, after it gets my password, will compile, log me in, get a JWT, which is in JWT test dot JSON, which I won't be opening. Once we log in, we get the user using the Blue Sky API. We list all of the posts and then we get the oldest post using Rust iterators. This example is using the Bisky crate. So you can find that at docs.rs slash Bisky, or you can go to the GitHub repo itself, which also has an example repo, which contains the get oldest post project that we're actually working with currently. I've made some minor modifications to mine because I'm actually, you know, playing with the API. So our oldest post here is a record that contains a URI, a CID, and the value. The value, of course, is just the value of the post. So it's the first post that I posted on Blue Sky when I got my account. The URI is an AT protocol followed by a DID. As a quick side note, the DID referenced in the AT protocol is a distributed ID. Really unfortunate that we chose DID, which is a W3 spec, because the acronym overlaps with dissociative identity disorder. So if you're Googling for DID, make sure that you add something like AT proto or spec or something like that. But otherwise this DID is the ID of a post here. And the CID is a fingerprint hash of the actual content. So that brings us to the code here. We've got a clap set up for our CLI arguments, most of which I'm providing via environment variables. We're using the struct opt, which got merged into clap. So derive APIs to do that. So we've got a struct arguments that we define a bunch of things on. We derive parser for it. And then we're also using Tokyo main because our main function is async because we're making API requests. We parse in the arguments. This particular client sets us up with some session types and makes us create a storage so that we store the JWTs somewhere. You can imagine these being stored in a database or something like that. The JWTs do need to be refreshed occasionally. So that's important to know if you're gonna build more of a service on this. But as far as I can tell, the client should mostly handle that for you. Then we use that. Assuming that all works, we construct a new Blue Sky client, which gives us a number of functions that we can call. In this case, we've got client.user, which is in this case, taking what we are querying in our CLI, so crispiscardi.bsky.social in this case, listing all of the posts for that user, awaiting it because it's async, and that returns us a vec of posts. We use Rust iterators to iterate over them, get the last one and unwrap it, and then just dump that to the console. So that's all pretty reasonable. So let's dive a little bit beneath that to understand a few of the concepts that you'll need to work with this API. And that brings us to the AT protocol. The AT protocol has a bit of grand marketing on their marketing page, but we're gonna mostly not deal with that at all because we're looking at this from the perspective of somebody who's just trying to use the dang API. So here's a quick rundown of a couple concepts. DIDs are actually a W3 spec that the AT protocol builds on top of to build out all this additional federated functionality. That means that while you can see a DID like this, 
valid user identifiers are also domain names. So then DIDs are the stable identifier for a user, while domain names are the routes to those IDs. If that still doesn't make sense, consider domain names to be the usernames and the DIDs to be the database ID that you would otherwise use to identify a user. Data for the protocol is stored in something called a Merkle search tree, which is a state-based CRDT, something like a Git repository. For now, this is really only relevant to look at an AT protocol URL and figure out what the ID is actually pointing to. In this case, we've got the alice.com root, which we can then dig into the post collection and then find a specific post ID. You access all of these APIs over something called XRPC, which TLDR is basically just HTTP anyway, but the schemas for the API endpoints are defined via something called lexicons. And this of course is where we see more of these reverse domain style identifiers. So it's not just a post, it's a post from a feed for a Blue Sky app. And honestly, we've skipped over a whole bunch of details, but that's all you need to get started. So grab an app password, grab a client in your favorite language, and start posting or reading your timeline. Have a great day, and I'll see you in the next one.